This is the exterior expansion. The inspection we are at the left elevation. We've got a lot of uh, grass and material uh, covering coming up close to the uh, brickwork here. You've got mulch coming in. Um, that's not good. It should have a, uh, a space of about four, six inches. So I'll put something in the report about that. Moving further along, yeah. in this in the exterior inspection, we're looking at walls and foundation in general because what we're looking for is signs of movement in the building. Now, the foundations themselves can have cracks in them, they can be there from the day the building was built, but they don't necessarily mean that they, the building is being stressed by movement. left-hand garage, left-hand of the rear elevation, and the garage. Now here we've got a gutter downpipe, it's entering onto the ground, you see put some stones here to dissipate the water, stop it eroding. Really what should happen is it should come out about two foot. Um, the stones are, are a help, but actually we don't want to get the water concentrated on the foundation in this area. We're now at the right elevation. Again, this is the exterior inspection. What we're looking for are issues with the the walls and the foundation itself. the gate is not opening properly and uh, it's just lowered itself on its hinges not uncommon now I'm going to have to go around I'm not going to squeeze through there because I don't want to damage the gate but the gate needs adjustment We're at the front left elevation bit of cracking here right at the corner it's mainly cosmetic it has actually traveled through the bricks the main thing with things like this is to repoint it seal it so water doesn't get in We've got a front porch. We've got a settlement crack running down here. 
Yeah, it runs almost to the foundation. And we have another settlement crack over the arch here. And we have four, more settlement here. You see inside here. Now this part of the building, yeah, it's almost like an extension of the building. So this could be just moving in this area here. And we've got more cracks there. And now we're at the right hand front where we finished off the rear elevation. So sorry, there's no evidence of a substantial movement in the foundation. No cracks around the windows. We'll be checking internally, see what goes on. There. This is the roof inspection. You can see here we have soffit vents for the roof. We're going to look at the roof from the ground first and then we'll have a look at it on the roof itself. Yeah, more soffits, they're continuous soffits. Which rather indicates that they're recent, in recent years, because these weren't available to be put on these buildings when this house was built. soffits actually more soffits all looking okay from the ventilation I just want to find out what the ventilation is for that ceramic okay so we've got adequate soffit ventilation all the way around the house and there's a upper attic vent there and then on the roof itself We've got two turbine vents, all looks quite good. Our well, next stage then is to get up on this roof and see what we can see once we're on it. I'm at the rear elevation of the property. Now I'm only going to be able to inspect it from this elevation because the roof is too steep for me to walk on it. That's the rear of the chimney. And you can see we have flashings there. Don't have a chimney cricket. They're normally quite important because they direct debris away from the back of the chimney breast and back down onto the onto the roof and off the roof by the water and wind. The chimney doesn't have a chimney cap, it has a, um, a spark screen, there's a wire screen up there, but really it should also have a chimney cap. From this position that I'm at, it's difficult for me to make an observation as to the condition of the coping. I can't get up there uh, because of the steepness of the property. The screen on the chimney cap is incomplete, it's, it'll keep sparks from coming out, but it won't stop rodents from getting in.
the attic inspection. First thing I know is that the attic steps are badly fitted and will become dangerous in time. What happens when you get this misalignment of that joint and that joint there is it strains them and over time they become damaged. But of course they don't get used a lot so just pay attention to it and if it looks like it's damaged in any way or any of these bolts come loose, tighten it. This is the attic inspection. We have uh, Romex cables running over the service boards. They've got to be protected, both of them. As being trodden on or hit, they could be damaged, easily damaged, and that can lead to a short circuit. This is the uh, fire door to the garage, which is good. Um, only comment I make about it is that this hinge up here uh, should be a self-closing hinge. So you want this door to close automatically. You can use a closer, but self-closing hinges is, is very inexpensive and very effective. Interior check, which is looking for cracks in the wood walls, ceilings, evidence of water penetration. Okay, so that gets a clear pass on the walls and windows and around the building. I've actually gone and opened up some of the windows, don't open all of them because there's often furnishes in the way and that stops me. But um, all the windows are in good condition, all the corking is good. There are three GFCIs in the panel, one here and two here. Now, 
this one worked perfectly it's the kitchen um, and there seems no problem with it at all however these two GFCIs here are not resetting properly um, I'm going to go back and we're going to check to see whether or not I've got the power back on but I don't think I have um, because they uh, these are prone to, a, to failure um, they are an active uh, component and they wear out so it may be that it's out. So there's a GFCI in the guest bathroom and again we've not reset it, it's not working. Now it could be another GFCI is around somewhere and I can't find it. Um, it can happen that way. Uh, we have two outlets inside the cupboards here. There's no great shape to that, that's good. Uh, the only problem we got is they are resetting. So I would say you're going to need new GFCI fitted to the board or then swapped out and rather than putting GFCI uh, breakers in just put GFCI outlets into here. Compressor unit on the exterior of the building are at the right elevation. The um, insulation on the coal pipes is in very poor condition and that needs replacing. There's signs of hail splatter on the unit, although I couldn't find any signs of hail damage on the roof, which is notoriously hard to find, but um, there wasn't any signs of it. Well, the unit is running okay, it's level, there's some hail damage on the, uh, the fins but that can be combed out. Clear out to the uh, property. Water meter is down at the curve here and the isolation valve is inside it. water heater it's been incorrectly installed up here we've got uh, a hood and the hood is loose It'll come apart and then you get gases of combustion coming out into the into the closet here and possibly into the house uh, down here we have a gas line and the glass line um, actually should have in it a drip leg a sediment trap to protect this uh, controller which is in fact an instrument from damage. This is a sealed unit you can see here. I have a blue flame burning in there. And I've turned it on and got a nice blue flame burning so good combustion.
good functional flow. And we have hot water. Okay, we have an extractor on the microwave. The way it operates. Blower. Works through all its range. Okay, well, the isolation valve should be in here somewhere. There it is. You actually see it, but you can take the drawer out to get at it, which means it's accessible. This is the air handler, it's currently running. We've uh, got it on heat. Yep, I can see the, the blue flame. I don't take these apart. There's nothing I can really do. I've got a, all I can really do is tell you that they're working. There's no signs of advanced rust in the tray. And the chimney's got no signs of, or flue's got no signs of rust around it or water penetration. This is the controller for the uh, sprinkler system. The sprinkler system only has two zones uh, and I couldn't get either zone to run. Uh, I don't program things because uh, I'm not allowed to. All I'm allowed to do is switch it on and off. You can see we've got a sprinkler head here and while I was inspecting the property I found sprinkler heads around the building. But uh, as I said, today I was unable to run the sprinkler system. This fireplace, you see at the back here we've got a quite a big crack. That's got to be uh, corked with fireproof corking. You don't want any cracks allowing uh, heat and such are getting through and possibly into the brickwork because it can burn. Up here we have a
So the damper up here, see if it operates, it does. 